Hey guys, it's your girl Didi, and you're tuned in to the Called Out podcast where it's all things pertaining to Christ. So as you guys can see by the title, today we're going to be talking about faith. But before I even get into why we're doing this episode and everything, background, I'm just going to open us up in prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for the privilege to gather here today to minister to your people. Lord, I just want to pray that indeed you'll arrest my tongue and speak through me. I pray that as I speak about faith, oh God, that somebody's faith will indeed come alive today, oh Heavenly Father. Lord, I just want to pray that I will decrease and that you will increase, oh Heavenly Father, that this episode will be all to the glory of your name, oh Heavenly Father. Lord, I just want to pray indeed arrest my tongue. May the spirit be evident here today, Father Lord. I bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen. So today's episode is all about faith, the realm of faith living in faith what is faith i was in service yesterday so in my church we're currently in a season of fasting a two-week fast and so we have service every day and i remember once when i was in service kind of pastor david my pastor like he was saying like some decisions you have to make in an atmosphere like it's the atmosphere of prayer it's when you're in the atmosphere that you will hear from god and so i said listen i know i'm going to be in service the day before i record this and obviously i have service again today um i'm recording this a few hours before service i said listen i just know god is going to give me a word so i was in service and you know it was kind of about faith for a bit and then it was like a eureka moment faith is the topic so today i am here to talk about faith i'm here to talk about faith um and yeah so yeah by god's grace somebody will be edified today and somebody's faith will come alive from today's episode and do you know what like it's so crazy i was saying literally before i i was recording i was saying that it's so crazy that i'm here talking about faith on this very day because guys if you heard the news that i heard today <laughs> my equilibrium it was, it was shook it was shook and i said hey god you have me here talking about faith when even me indeed like it's hard to activate my faith upon this matter because the news is you know when you get news and it's disturbing it's like listen but our slogan in this season and forever is i believe god so even when i hear bad news i believe god i believe god like they may have said the bad news but hey i don't believe that because who do i believe i believe god so i've chosen to say that and obviously saying i believe god yeah you will say it sometimes it's hard for you to actually feel it you know what i'm saying but yeah it's crazy that i'm recording about faith on this very day i just said god like but i i believe god <laughs> i believe god so i believe that there's a reason for this do you know what i'm saying um but yeah guys so firstly i'm gonna just talk about what is faith so when you think about what is faith i think about hebrews chapter 11 verses 1 you know hebrews chapter 11 verses 1 says faith oh it says now faith now faith is a substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen you see how it starts off saying now faith you have to know that faith is now faith is now it's not like it's a living thing so you ha can choose you can choose to live in the realm of faith that's why the bible says in habakkuk chapter 2 verses 4 it says now the just shall live by faith and i believe <laughs> i'm trying to say all the scriptures that there's like four scriptures yeah that says the just shall live by faith habakkuk chapter 2 verses 4 romans chapter 1 verse 17 hebrews chapter 10 verses 38 and i don't know by god's grace i believe it's that that's the correct scriptures um but it's definitely the correct books i don't know if about the chapter and verse but for the bible to say so many times the just shall live by faith it shows that we can actually live in a realm of faith and if it says that the just meaning us meaning us as believers shall live by faith if you're not living by faith you're not alive technically we think about it your heart if your heart is is not is not there you will what you won't be living right because you need the heart to live so as believers we need faith to live so as i said hebrews chapter 11 verses 1 now faith is a substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not yet seen like you know in in a normal living people say oh seeing is believing but being a christian is the opposite believing is seeing you know believing precedes the seeing or seeing precedes the yeah whichever way you get what i'm trying to say um basically believing comes first you have to believe and what do you believe bible says that 
without faith, it is impossible to please God. For those who, you know, are in Christ have to first believe that he is and that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. When you come to Christ, the Christian journey starts with faith because you can't be a Christian void of faith because what? Christianity literally is faith. Like you got to have belief that Jesus Christ is the son of God, that he is the Christ, the savior of the world. You know, you have to first believe that. So when you think about faith, many people think faith is wishful thinking like okay I'm gonna wish for this to happen you know many people say manifestation like I'm thinking about the thing and that's faith no 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 faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen so faith is actually evidence you know many people say oh like you're doing too much like you're just believing it but you don't actually have evidence of it but faith is evidence that's why the bible says the evidence of things not yet seen so I even want to share my testimony like if you guys don't know I do an apprenticeship right with the BBC glory be to Jesus and I did a TikTok video um basically about this and so I just wanted to share it with you guys I took a gap year before I enrolled doing this course right you know sometimes I'll be like listen I'm a BBC worker I'm a BBC worker like I kept confessing it and do you know like people would say oh I want to wait for the confirmation email as my evidence but I didn't need that confirmation email saying congratulations to be my evidence no my evidence was my faith <laughs> my faith was the evidence and I believed in God and I said listen God I know that you will never put me to shame I know that you won't fail me and I said listen I need this apprenticeship <laughs> like because it was like if I don't get this do you know the trouble I'll be in for my parents not going to university and now you've got nothing after the gap year oh god I said listen god it's not even just for me but I need this for my family to make them proud you know I said listen god you will you have to come through type thing you gotta come through type thing and indeed he did so when I think about that I'm like listen faith was my evidence I didn't need the evidence of the confirmation or oh, you congratulations that was a bonus because I already knew I was gonna get there. You know what I'm saying? I, I already finna knew that I was gonna get there. So I didn't need that. But obviously when I got it, I, like, I knew it. <laughs> it's crazy because I recorded a video and I was literally like going home late and I had like a 7 a.m. shift and I was like, I hated that job, mercy Lord. Thank you Lord for the job because that, that job that I had prior, <laughs> I also prayed for it. So <laughs> mercy Lord. But I was tired. I was like, Hi, I've got work early in the morning and I did a video and I recorded it saying listen I, I didn't post it though because I didn't tell people that I enrolled like in this application because some things guys that like, you just gotta keep it hush hush to it the full thing manifest is because you don't want to end up you know miscarrying because you spoke too soon you know so I just was like yeah, yeah, like I won't speak at the moment I won't tell people obviously I told people like my pastor my parents but people didn't know too tough till the thing came and they saw it. They didn't need to know too tough. Um, yeah, but yeah, so obviously um, I did a video and I was just saying, oh, like, guys, you guys don't know, but I have an early shift and like, oh, this job, but I'm gonna be a BBC worker soon and I'm gonna post this and show you guys. Tell me why, I believe it was like two days later. I get an email congratulations congratulations it was just crazy like it was like I literally recorded that and a few days later I actually received that the testimony in <laughs> in full form which was a blessing genuinely such a blessing but yeah so I have a few notes that I put down because obviously I found out yesterday that I was doing this episode about faith so I just wrote down a few notes so yeah faith is a realm you have to choose to to live in the realm of faith and so you see for example me and my testimony about my apprenticeship I decided to live in that realm of faith and there's some things that you can only transact when you go to the realm of faith so for example me with my apprenticeship it wasn't here in the physical right but it was in the realm of faith so my faith me believing in in Christ I went to that realm of faith and I grabbed that testimony to the fact to now I was able to see it in the natural you know faith is 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 not was it's not later faith is now faith is instantly faith is immediately that's what the bible says now faith is is not was now 
faith is so you guys have to act now and believe god that you will have that faith and what does the bible say romans 10 17 faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god so you know literally the faith that you live in is really at the mercy of your exposure to the word so if you yourself are not going to church and beyond just going to church on a sunday but you're striving every single day you're listening to a message that will feed your spirit man then your faith won't grow if you're not doing those things you know your faith cannot grow beyond how much you're hearing the word how much you're in the word because you will study the word and there will be literally a scripture there's a scripture for everything there will be a scripture for your for your matter for the very thing that you're going through for the very thing you're believing will pass and there will be a scripture about that and then you hold on to that word you have faith in that word and you will see your testimony you know and so now I wanted to another scripture that I wanted to kind of read to you guys is Habakkuk Habakkuk chapter 2 verses 3 and it says for the vision is yet for an appointed time but at the end it will speak and it will not lie though it tarries wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry now reading that scripture with you know a veil on your eyes or in your fleshly eyes and not entering the spirit to, to really read this you'll be thinking huh it's a contradiction like it don't make no sense the bible says though it tarries wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry so you're like okay are you confused is it tarrying or is it not tarrying because how can it say though it tarries wait for it and then it says oh it, it will come like it's, it's not gonna tarry but you just said though it tarries but the first tarry is man's understanding of time and the second one is god's timing so though it tarries for example you may be believing god for you know if you're older and you're married a baby and to you is tarrying oh it's been five years why do you not have a baby or you're believing god for that job oh it's been five months why do i still not have this job though it tarries that's your your mindset of tarrying because the bible says that a day is like a thousand a thousand like a day to god it says that his ways are not our ways nor are his thoughts our thoughts so what is like been considered five months to us to god ugh, time is not a problem time is not a problem when it comes to god you know it says in galatians 4 4 in the fullness of time god sent forth his son you know in the fullness of time so everything has to happen in the fullness of time you know god won't give you something that is not in the correct timing because you could end up aborting that you can end up miscarrying that because you're not ready you know you're not ready to have that whatever it is that you're believing god for you know so it says though it tarries wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry so in our mind it looks like things are tarrying it looks like god like i've been believing you for this thing for ages now and it's tarrying but god says listen wait for it because it will not tarry you know so that's why faith is 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 hard you know living in a faith of of living in the realm sorry of faith is very hard because sometimes you can only see things in the natural so it looks like oh this person it, it looks all like all odds have failed if that's what people say or odds have failed um it looks like all hope is lost it looks like that yeah it looks like that in the natural but somebody has to enter the realm of faith and transact your testimony and transact what god has in store for you you know and when you look about when you look at the hall of faith abraham guys i don't know like if we really really deep abraham's story cool i believe at age 75 god comes to abraham god says listen count the stars <laughs> so shall thy seed be so shall your descendants be you're can't counting the stars hey you can't even count it that's how many that's how your seed shall be abraham's like hey i don't have child i don't have child me and sarah we don't have child but god said that promise and this goes back to habakkuk 2 3 though it tarries wait for it shall surely come it will not tarry so 75 and finally at the age of 100 99 100 that's when he finally has the promised child isaac so that would have been a period of waiting ah, a season of waiting a long time of waiting and then 
obviously we see now God says to Abraham, okay, you've had your child now. Now go, take your son, your beloved son, whom you love. Oh, do you know God is, 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 is he means business. He didn't just say, okay, take your son, like, whom you love. Hey, imagine waiting this long for a promised child. Now God comes to you and says, listen, take your son, your beloved son, the one you love very much and go sacrifice him. Huh? Huh? God, is it a prank? He was. Is it what? Uh, 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 no words. Oh, God, like, huh? Come again? <laughs> you know when you just have to ask it, God. Um, God. Um, what? <laughs> what? The son, the promised son. I waited twenty five years, right? I waited twenty five years, and you're telling me to go and sacrifice him. But Abraham, it said that the oh, early in the morning he rose and he went up to do that very thing God had said. What? I waited for this child. You said that from this child, that's where, you know, all the nations are, will be blessed. This is the promised child, right? But you're telling me to sacrifice him? But Abraham didn't, he didn't stagger at God's promise. He didn't stagger, look to the left and look to the right. He just said, listen, I judge him faithful. I judge him faithful. So it even goes back to even them even having a child. It says that they judged him faithful to, to do what he had said. Even though their womb was closed, her womb was closed. They were beyond the, the age to even ha have birth, have children. But they judged him who promised to be faithful. Do you judge God to be faithful? Why do you doubt? You know, Jesus said many times in scripture, Oh, ye of little faith. Why do you worry? Why did you doubt? Oh, you have little faith. Why do you have little faith? And sometimes God is even saying that again to us in these times. Why do you have little faith? Why did you doubt? You know, even after, you know, Jesus was able to perform the miracles of feeding so many people with just little, 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 little amount of things he had. Even again, when it happened, they're like, oh, oh, Jesus, how are we going to feed all these people? But Jesus just did that. He already fed all the people. So why why, why are you now questioning again? How is it going to happen? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, Why are you still questioning when you've just seen it happen? You've seen God heal you and you're ill again. Why are you questioning that it can happen when he's just done it before? You've seen God get you through that season where you had no money, you were dry. Why are you now questioning when you've seen him done it, do it before? So Abraham, right? He takes Isaac, he takes his, his beloved, his beloved son up there. And obviously we know that by God's grace, God said, stop. It was just a test of your faith. And he passed the test of his faith, right? Um, and yeah, so that is what you call radical faith. For God, like for you to wait that long for a promised child. Now God to say, listen, just take your son and go sacrifice him. What? It takes some radical faith. But Abraham is like, listen, I've come this, I've come so far. You are too faithful to fail me. You know, I've come this far. I know that you will not just leave me or forsake me. And if you said that from this, this child, all the nations will be, be, be blessed. If you're telling me to sacrifice him, I know that I help, however you're going to do it, you're still going to do it. You know, like Abraham, it's just so deep, like, when we look at Romans chapter 4 verses 18 the Bible says in Romans chapter 4 verses 18 it says who contrary to hope in hope believed so that he he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken so shall your descendants be and not being weak in faith he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. Kai, Abraham, no wonder we call him the father of faith. Like This guy, his faith is radical. He said, listen, in hope contrary to hope he he considered not even his own body why are you worried about why how it's gonna happen just believe god if god has said it it doesn't matter how it really doesn't matter how it just what you need to focus on is the word
you know even going back to abraham like he's just ah ah like when god said listen go go to a land you don't even know this land you don't know the people in the land you don't even know what's going to happen in the land that it says listen abraham obeyed and went out not knowing where he was going this is faith that is like mind-blowing that us as believers have to determine that we will even enter this realm of faith because abraham you're comfortable in, in your you know all your people them there now god says okay move go to another place huh sorry because a lot of us like comfortability let's not lie a lot of us like to be comfortable a lot of us like to remain and stay where we are when god is calling us to go places we're like oh i don't want to be uncomfortable abraham went to a ugh, a completely different land because god told him to he said he obeyed and went out not knowing where he was going a lot of us want to know everything a lot of us are too knowy knowy <laughs> god says do this god says okay you're gonna have a job okay god when okay god which job okay what can you give me the exact time <laughs> the nanosecond can you give me the day oh god is saying oh you have little faith you're weak in faith absolutely weak in faith because you're exposure to the word you guys are not ex exposing yourselves to the word hence why yes of course you'll be weak in faith of course you won't be able to believe god because you don't you're not exposing yourself to be able to believe in god and trust in god when you think about peter right when he said lord if it's you bid me to come on the water jesus said come kai and he starts walking on water many of us think that he was walking on water but realistically he was walking on the word so if he didn't hear that word come he wouldn't have been able he wouldn't have been able to walk on the water of course not of course not but when he heard the word he was walking on the word so the word ah uh, i remember i was in faith seminar right in a service and it was said that like the word created the platform for him to walk so it was like he was walking on the word it's like imagine just like logs of wood just like one that will float <laughs> that was there afloat and he's just walking as if it's just dry ground and it even it takes you back to the israelites when moses parted the red sea and they walked on it now it looked like okay it's just dry ground like we can all walk on it but when the egyptians came did, did it not close on them did they not all flood hey did they not all drown hey so it's not that it was just dry ground they were walking on the word that they have received so peter he was walking on the word now it says now when he began to see the waves they were boisterous he began to sink so now he took his eyes he took his focus off the word and now onto his surroundings and that's some of us we've received the word that you know through scripture that you know by by his traps you're healed we've received words that whatever is your situation you've received the word on it but now you begin to look and say oh but no it surely it can't happen because this because this but you've received the word so just believe in the word because that's how you will sink when you take your eyes off of the word that's how peter began to sink right so we need to keep our eyes fixed and oh it reminds me in john right oh, in john chapter three the man or john chapter four john chapter four i believe it's john chapter four um the man who came to jesus said jesus please come come my son is literally on the verge of of being gone like he's ill jesus said oh unless you people see signs and wonders you will not believe and and <laughs> the guy completely aired that he said please come to my house come to my house like come please jesus said listen go your son lives and the man went the man could have said jesus are you being for real i've just come from the go i've just come from there and my son is indeed not living like something is really up with him and you're telling me go your way your son lives pardon he could have just said jesus listen you're fake like just move but he said that he believed in that word so as he went he heard the news oh my gosh your son lives the very word he heard came to pass your son lives he said he inquired when like when did this happen and he realized it was that same hour jesus had spoken the word and he believed there could be a word that you see that you hear but until you believe in that word 
that word can't be applied to your life you know when you think about for example James in the book of James it talks about listen when you ask you gotta ask in faith because it says the one who doubts let not that man think he will receive anything hey the scripture is deep it says listen if you don't ask in faith let not that man think let not that man suppose that he will receive anything because why are you asking if you're doubting him huh it's an offense god the almighty you're going to him and another scripture they said oh jesus if you can if you can please make him well jesus said if i can like huh he said no if you can believe it's not about if jesus can because jesus oh jesus can do it he listen we've seen lazarus dead rise again you know we've seen we've seen him raise the dead heal the sick people who were lame heal the lame we've seen him it's not about if he can it's about if you can believe do you believe god you know when i say do you believe god i want you guys listening you guys watching to say i believe god because i need this episode to ignite to just ugh, alive somebody's faith because somebody that's listening and watching this your faith is 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 weak your faith is small you don't have abraham type faith you have weak faith because you don't judge him faithful you don't believe him to be faithful it's not about if jesus can do it because he can it's about if you can believe it's about if you can take that step to believe and trust in him who is faithful don't let your expectation of god cause you to miss it let me talk to this camera don't let your expectation of god cause you to miss it because when you think about in john chapter 9 right there was a guy and like obviously he's blind sorry guys i always end up touching the mic and when i edit it i'm like this sound is jarring like mercy but yeah when you think about the guy in john chapter 9 he was blind and he's going for healing right jesus spits gets the gets the the mud rubs it hey jesus you're about to put this on my eyes spit hey you're thinking listen jesus will just do a little prayer for you jesus will just say oh like he said to the others you know you're well rise up and walk jesus had spit mixing it and come to rub on your eye some of you because of your expectation of god you will dodge spit you will say you better you better move with that spit be honest some of us would because your expectation of god is different that's why the pharisees like when jesus was there in person they had an expectation that listen the jews that's why we see in acts right when jesus is there speaking and then they're like okay will you at this time restore the kingdom to israel because obviously their pol politic politics their politics they're thinking listen yeah when jesus comes he's part of us he's gonna put us on top again he's gonna put us on top again so when jesus is talking about said spirit waiting on the spirit they're like okay okay well you at now now this time are you gonna restore the kingdom to israel ah it's not for you to know the times and the seasons the father has put into authority you know that's what jesus had said and yeah like a lot of us will say huh when he comes carpenter he comes in the he comes you know just how he came through mary what this can't be the savior this can't be the christ what because their expectation of god caused them to miss him when he actually he actually showed up they literally crucified they literally said oh crucify him because they they missed it because the expectation caused them to miss it so don't let your expectation of god cause you to miss it that guy he had faith he said listen jesus jesus if you want to spit like if you want to do anything for me to receive my healing oh god you better do it trust me i believe you and you can do anything and on the back of that now jesus said go and wash the guy could have said what you've just spat on me i feel violated you better move like and not obey the instruction but he obeyed the same with the man who jesus said go go your way your son lives he obeyed and he went his way and his son indeed lived this man obeyed he went to wash and he he went seeing because he believed because he had faith and faith and obedience go hand in hand you know it says abraham obeyed and went out the obeyed you know obedience he went out he had faith he didn't know where he was going he had faith 
this man he had faith that Jesus would indeed heal him and indeed Jesus healed him so don't let your expectation of God cause you to miss what he's doing God is moving cry he is moving he is always moving and we have to decide if we will get on that train of faith or if we're going to stay in this natural what we can see it's not about that believing is seeing not seeing is believing remember that and I wanted to talk about yeah why should we have faith as I said earlier Hebrews 11 6 says faith without faith is impossible to please God period so why should you have faith because without it it's impossible to please God like it's actually impossible to please God if you don't have faith and you know I was really thinking about scripture because I just read Proverbs right and Proverbs 12 25 was talking about a good word like the importance of having a good word I want to actually read it to you guys like I know that it says like anxiety weighs down like your heart but a good word makes it makes it glad so I'm gonna read it word for word. I believe that's actually what it says word for word you know me bible scholar you know me I know the scriptures <laughs> it says anxiety in the heart of man causes depression but a good word makes it glad you know a good word makes it glad it's time for us to get in our bible i believe sometimes that when we're lacking faith we tend to like run away from reading our bible but so how do you expect your faith to grow if you're running away from the one who gives the faith you're running away from what can like allow your faith to become alive it's crazy but we do it and it's like mercy lord i just want to encourage somebody who's listening who's watching who may your faith may be hard you're going through something hard and even this is even speaking to me you know as i said at the beginning the news i heard like but i've just been saying all day i believe god i believe god i believe god because he's gonna come through why would he not come through he's too faithful to fail me he is too faithful to disappoint you know like that song oh you're too faithful to fail me ah you're too faithful Moses bliss ate with that song it's very true you're too faithful because in him his promises are yes and amen you know in him Romans 8 28 all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and accord according to his purpose so I know that even if I cannot see him necessarily working I know that he is working another song when I cannot see it, God, I still believe it. You are working all things for my good. When I cannot see it, God, I still believe it. You are working all things for my good. Period. Like, that's somebody's faith needs to, to grow, you know. Stop doubting because let not that man think that he'll receive anything. When you're coming to God, you're saying, God, if you can, he's like, if you can if I can no if you can believe if you can believe somebody needs to believe somebody needs to believe but it takes you taking steps of faith but you can't like if you're not in your word if you're not reading your word what does the bible say about that matter you know whenever you're faced with a situation always think I need a word for this situation because as I said there's a word for everything so you need to think okay what does the word say about this situation you feel ill what does the word say oh it says by his stripes we are healed okay i'm going to take i'm going to take that word i'm going to take that word and hold it close to myself and i know that i'll receive my healing you know faith is sorry <laughs> Damn, i'm literally yawning that's crazy um yeah faith is not wishful thinking faith is now faith is living faith is active we need to decide that we will live in that realm of faith as a scripture has said that the just shall live by faith so if you're not living by faith you're not living period the scripture says in hebrews chapter 11 verse is 27 by faith he forsook egypt not fearing the wrath of the king for he endured as seeing him who is invisible as seeing him who is invisible you're thinking huh how can you see who is invisible you need a word you need a word this can only be done on the back of a word you can't see someone invisible no you gotta have faith you gotta have faith amen so that is the end of the beginning about faith all about faith 
Um, And so I just pray that, Lord, as you have spoken through me and you've spoken about faith, I just pray that whoever was listening, whoever was watching, that their faith will indeed be ignited, Lord, that indeed you will rekindle, that you will give them, Father Lord, faith that will never fail, unfeigned faith, oh Heavenly Father, radical faith, great faith, oh Heavenly Father, Lord, and may they not have weak faith, oh Heavenly Father. Lord, I pray that as I've spoken today, Father Lord, that someone will open their work. The, the scriptures or oh, heavenly father and receive a word that will just set them on their feet or oh, heavenly father in jesus mighty name amen so guys as i said at the beginning <laughs> if you watched my latest podcast or listen to it um um you guys would know that i'm starting a new series and that series is dilemmas so obviously via my instagram which is dd.kayy dd.k d-e-e-d-e-e.kayy um i get you guys to send me dilemmas on there which i will solve at the end of every episode by god's grace somebody sent me a dilemma and by the way dilemmas will always be anonymous i will never come and say your your full name your instagram handle or anything it'll always be anonymous obviously the only person will know is me because i can see your username but yeah somebody said I'm a dedicated Christian. I would say this year I have actually worked so hard with my relationship with God, but I'm still struggling heavily with lust. Do I need to get delivered or should I ask God to take this away from me? I don't know what to do. My thing is, if I do get delivered, I'm scared if I have any bad spirits and I will be shaking and doing the most and also scared to open up and tell the pastor, is there any other ways the spirit of lust can go? So this is such a good question. You know, deliverance in terms of like laying of hands and shaking it's needed like there's a, there's a space for it but deliverance can also come through the word laying of hands is one of the ways that you can obviously receive deliverance right but at the same time if you're laying hands on someone with an empty head and they don't actually have understanding of it more time it it, it may not even accomplish what it's supposed to because imagine you don't have understanding at all about what it is that is even going on you're laying hands on an empty head there's nothing like is void might as well not right so we also have to have knowledge and understanding and it made me think about luke chapter 4 verses 18 it says the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed amen so this is Jesus and he's saying the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me too and then these are a list of things that the spirit of the Lord being upon him has anointed him too so when it says to preach to preach and then to set the liberty to those who are oppressed you know we can actually receive our deliverance through the word of God like when you're reading the word of God Christ is being imparted into you right um Christ is being downloaded into you right and we the bible says he who the sun sets free is free indeed christ has set us free christ has delivered us the more of christ you just consume you get to know demons tremble at that name you know and he's given us authority to crush every scorpion every serpent and it will by no means you know harm us so yeah it's not always just by laying of hands obviously that we can receive deliverance also by the word of god so ensure that we're in in taking the word of god we're living breathing everything on the word of god um and that is indeed how you have your liberty and your freedom amen but yeah guys so that is one of the dilemmas that i'm gonna read for today's episode um as i said if you guys want to get featured and like sending your dilemmas asking questions etc to be featured in another episode ensure that you follow me on instagram so that you will be across when i post another time like this um but yeah guys i really hope that today's episode edified somebody um of course we spoke about faith and i do indeed pray that somebody's faith is coming alive and as i said a scripture that those who you know are in christ they have to first believe that he is right and the rock that you know christianity is built on and the church is built on that foundation that christ is the son of the living god and he is the christ you know many people think that jesus christ like christ is his his surname (laughs) that was me lol but anyways the christ means the savior messiah the savior right 
so Jesus Christ he is the savior so when you become born again you have to believe that he is the Christ the son of the living God you have to believe that he died on the cross for your sins that he rose again so that you may have eternal life and I always never end an episode without giving somebody the ability somebody the choice somebody the chance to give their life to Christ so if you are one that you're listening to this and you're like listen I want to get to know this Jesus or you're listening and you say oh I've backslid completely I want to rededicate my life to Christ then it just takes you confessing and believing in your heart you know in Jesus Christ as a son of the living God it takes you confessing that believing that with all your heart um and then confessing that like wedding vows saying listen lord i want to i want to marry you basically so if you are one like that please repeat after me heavenly father i come to you today as a sinner lord i believe that you died on the cross and on the third day you rose again that i may have eternal life i repent of my sins and i invite you into my heart into my life to be my personal lord and savior please wash me on the inside and make me a brand new person in Jesus mighty name amen amen heavenly father I just want to pray for those who have given their lives to you today father lord I pray that they'll never put their hand to the plow and look back I pray that god their faith oh god is coming alive from today oh god I pray oh heavenly father that you will grant them grace to run this race oh heavenly father for we know that this is a journey and a consistent journey of faith from beginning till the very end oh heavenly father lord I bless your name in Jesus name amen amen so guys yeah let me got let me know what episodes you guys want to see what topics you guys want me to talk about love you guys and somebody's faith is growing somebody's faith is growing what do you have to say i believe god hallelujah thank you guys for watching bye